against each other. And well, again, since yesterday, it's going to be a lot of interesting matchups uh, for today for our round of 16. And for our players for our first match, he'll be having Serenity. Offlaner is going to be Dark Vader. Luke, I am your father. I you. Mage with, the, uh, with Sashwat. Marksman by Light. Jungler will be played by Morpheus. And Observer will be Zip by. Yes, sir. And on the other side of the spectrum, we've got Potatoes, Kyo as their offlaner, Kamikaze as their mage, Naga Batman for their marksman, Nifio Ryo as their jungler, and Killer Guy as their observer. Mm -hmm. And yesterday, we did see some pretty interesting picks from our previous teams. And two of those teams we will be able to watch from today. The other teams we will not be able to watch, I believe. But again, let's just go back for our match one. Potatoes did go up against Capricious yesterday, wherein they implemented quite a bit of, I would say, interesting uh, picks, kind of focusing more on the Zenial first pick and then if they can actually squeeze it in, a Moran for their marksman. Yeah, they have they obviously have a lot on their sleeve. And I feel like as the tournament progresses here at the Summer Championship for India, I feel like the, the battles are going to get more intense and intense. If y'all didn't get to witness yesterday's matches, most of them ended up in two O's. So I'm assuming, again, because we're now at top 16, tomorrow we're going to be encountering round eight. And then at Sunday, it's going to be the playoffs on towards mm. the final. So it's going to be, re everything's going to be narrowed down and I feel like the teams are going to be really stretched or going to be challenged and pushed to uh pushed a lot to their limits yeah true that and speaking of like these teams or at least you know AOB for for the while in terms of heroes before we do get into our first game in this best of three again I believe this is still uh best of three single elimination so if you're out for this first series you are out of the tournament you know for that possibility to join in that price pool of price pool of the five lakh rupees plus AOB t-shirts anyways um I believe you want to start off with this who are the heroes that we will be mostly seeing you know from yesterday or from your experience well we have been seeing a lot of the classics but it really depends on the team like for example there is uh during day one we've seen a murad and zephyr span there's a, a lot of focus on the junglers but you know what i feel like we might see something new for day number two all right so let's get into the draft guys for game number one um continuing off superman is also a very very huge contested pick um but at the same time we can see that Red zephyr is being taken out of the draft so i'm assuming this could be a superman ban with your first pick, you either Blue sometimes people will get their marksman, sometimes you go senial so that you can fit it into a macro uh, composition or where not really macro composition, whereas you have more options for strategy. But looks like this is going to be the first time we'll be seeing a max first pick. Normally we see max at second or third rotation, but now let's see what they're going to be picking here. As Preda has been super duper effective and Ryoma as well. All right, interesting. I did. Kind of expected to see maybe the Zenial first rotation here for Potatoes, but they wanted to possibly match up the damage output of this Max, you know, be able to kind of um, keep him steadied on that lane with the Ryoma, possibly going to go for the offlane role. And first time we'll be seeing the Wonder Woman come into the fray once again, but there you go with the Prada as well. And Potatoes going to be implementing a Zenial Mina. Pick, which I believe they did use yesterday again with their match against Capricious on game number two. So right off the bat, we see a pretty good amount of crowd control uh, initiations as well as AOE damage. Yeah, but I really love Serenity's draft right now. They've secured a lot of top picks in the current meta. We've got Max, we've got Wonder Woman, L'Oreal for your mobility in late game, Violet for that constant sustained damage and poke as well. And the Alice for the early game rotation. So you have a lot of, uh, everything's pretty much covered. Meanwhile for Potatoes, I'm also a fan of their pick. It's just, I'm just not particularly a fan of a, the Mina pick because Mina for me, once you go in, you have to be that person. It has to be a surefire commitment to the fight or else you might use your flicker. Uh, normally you use your flicker to actually get into the fight and try to taunt and surprise people, but because of that, it's she's more of an all-in and then no going back out sort of. That, that is definitely true, but I think 
Potatoes is is actually okay with this one. The Spud team kind of uses the Mina as that all-in-one in, right? But because you have the Zenyo, because you have that Morin for some crowd control and immediate response, it doesn't feel like this Mina, even though, or this Mina, even though she kind of initiates, you know, by herself and she might get blown up by herself, the utility that her team has, even with the Parade as well, might be enough to kind of supplement her weaknesses around it. And I think this is what Mina players kind of tend to lack if you get, if you some random pub matches is that you don't have a team that can supplement your skill set, but if you have something that has good amount of crowd control, good amount of response, then, you know, um, her AOE, her taunt is definitely going to be something that I feel like Potatoes will be able to use. On the other hand, what do you feel about, you know, what um, Serenity is going to be implementing for their composition? They have the Wonder Woman. Yeah, they have the Wonder Woman. I feel like there's a lot of protect going on as well as mobility. So for me, when you get that Spectral Plague on that Prada, it takes a while to charge. And because mm -hmm. of them very mobile, everybody has some sort of movement dash, if you will. Aside from that, we have an AOE movement speed as well. So when it comes to dodging skill shots, it's going to be very effortless uh, for the side of Serenity. So it's all about finding the correct timing for Preda to actually be effective in the team fight or whether or trying to contest towers. I feel like uh, sieging is one of Preda's strength because you wave clear so easily. And if ever they want to contest, they have to uh, clear uh, they have to stay away from the uh, linear skill shot. But at the same time, um, Moriel, once she comes back, comes online for her for for her cooldowns are, are faster and, and stuff like that. I feel like they might uh, potatoes might have a hard time. But again, this is all on paper. It's gonna matter. Uh, it's all go. It all boils down to how they move during the early phases of the game. What happens at level four or what happens at level two when everybody gets their CC skills. For me, I really love the Alice pick because it's a very good balance all throughout the phases of the game. And that sunshine and that friendship is going to be very important in securing, you know, the kills and as well as escaping. Yeah, I t totally agree with you on that one. Another thing here is that we're seeing a max pick on the first rotation. Something that I kind of feel like maybe why they kind of went for this and then a second uh, rotation on that L'Oreal pick is that they don't want the L'Oreal being um, maybe focused on by that max lift off because I feel like even though you can dash around as long as that max can actually connect you with his uh with his first skill he can just follow up or with his ultimate rather he can just follow up afterwards with more of his uh, sticking potential and that's going to be very difficult for the L'Oreal to actually you know get away from because max isn't really a skill shot hero he's more of just you know um point your ultimate then just follow up with your spin to wins and then it's gonna be difficult. Compare that to the Senyo who has to cut, just like try to stick to you. You have so much mobility, but the max can just stick better. Yeah, having that max, I think on first rotation was a good decision for them to kind of transition into the second L'Oreal pick. Yeah, I have to agree with you there, but I guess it's one of those things. Max is more of like, I am going to try and secure the kill. We see a lot, we saw how Max was played um, yesterday. It was more like, okay, this person is so low. I will try to lift mm, off and charge in yeah. and finish kill and he's because he's one of those really tanky bruiser types that was against you know maganga um compositions yesterday i do remember so i feel like uh the play style is just definitely gonna vary for Senyal, it's well play style is gonna vary but their usage is like numbers advantage as well just gonna try and surprise each other so it's all about the correct timing and one thing that i noticed in uh aov india is that they normally don't do abyssal dragon dances it's always mm. picks and then that's the time they get to um what do you call this yeah. dominate the abyssal dragon we've only seen like one or two fights out of all the four matches that um that was streamed yesterday but again yesterday there were simultaneous uh matches that was on during uh during our stream yeah so since it was around 32 i believe yes so we really can't like be able to cover every single one of that but you guys did see yesterday some pretty interesting picks overall like out of all of those four matches we saw a lot of like let's say um thought process or mindsets that are very different from each one of these teams like, we, we saw a pick that had i believe double marksman we saw a pick that had a lot of assassin in your face type of characters and then there's a lot of pick that has only melee heroes you know and i think i believe that was the match uh with SPTX and and xd but anyways to 
play, or rather to shoutcast play-by-play play our game number one. It's going to be Riku, as well as I request a duel. So guys, you know what to do. As always, thank you for that introduction, Asurai, and I'm obviously going to be joined here with Riku, and after that draft analysis, I'm also kind of thinking here that the Max pick, the Wonder Woman pick, uh, Max we only got to see a small glimpse of yesterday, and it'll be interesting to see how Serenity put that into their team comp for today, alongside that Wonder Woman that we haven't seen yet, but we were speculating would be a prioritized pick, so it's finally good to see it coming out into play here. However, if I were to say something that it would be, I'm actually preferring Potato's team comp overall as a whole. How are you feeling about Riku? Hmm, interesting. Because uh, Naga Batman actually doesn't have, I saw because a, a, she's the observer and opted for a heal um, for the squad, the only person that has heal. So she will sacrifice her own safety, his own safety in exchange for the team's utility. So I feel like it's one of the things that is worrisome about a Mina pick. But again, I feel like Potatoes is super confident with this. Whenever they want to go in, that is the time. But that would mean that Taunt will go a little bit later because as an observer, you're one of the heroes or the characters that will get level four last in the squad. Mm, I, I get that there, but so far both teams playing a fairly okay. It looks like Zip um, maybe having some connection issues there. Decide to have a nice little stand of the sun underneath the enemy tower there for first blood. So I'm sure that wasn't intentional. Uh, I was just about to say prior to that, neither team's been really bad aggressive with the initial rotations. And just luckily enough for Potatoes, they were able to pick up that first blood uh, gold for themselves. And you can see here, Serenity, they're looking around the Abyssal Dragon and they're actually going to aggress onto it. I think this is the correct play to do here, uh, especially after losing that first blood. The Tails might be caught a bit off guard with that kind of move. And so Serenity making a good choice there to uh, move on to that objective and pick it up without any contest, even though I believe uh, there was a rotation from the Ryoma who was just keeping an eye on it, but couldn't really do anything to steal that away. Exactly. Correct play indeed from Serenity. It's awesome to, to see that they're very, very confident and quick in making their decisions. No dilly-dallying and it's a good consolation prize. I really take a kill, one kill over, uh, I'd rather take an Abyssal Dragon rather over one kill any day. Mm -hmm. Perhaps it was all a part of the plan all along. They're like, Alice, go stand under tower so they get first <laughs> blood, they get confident. And then we're going to go steal the Abyssal Dragon. But here we do see Alice getting caught out. Oh, not Alice, Zenial getting caught out this time. Uh, they're flying over that Sentiel, but it looks like just a bit of poke damage being traded off. I don't think any kill secures just yet. Although there are a few members from Serenity putting pressure on this top lane here. And they need to be careful because it's caused the rest of Potatoes to make the rotation up to this top side of the map. But it really looking at it, in terms of just movements, these small movements they're making, if I were to go off anything, it would be that Serenity are going to be the aggressors into this early game because Potatoes really haven't done anything so out there yet. That is true. One thing As I to say know that, <laughs> oh, Naga no. is going to roam up into trying to invade the enemy jungle. He's going to get punished for it, and they get the lockdown onto them. Next is going to be kill a guy caught up, but they get the return kill onto Shashwat instead. But as they go back to the tower, they get picked up by that Wonder Woman, and Adapt Darth Vader going to dive in deep under the tower. There's that Max ult we were talking about being put to good use, joining it in the team fight when necessary. And Serenity uh, overall ending up on top of that engagement. That is true. I was about to bring up how tough it is um, for the side of Potatoes to actually make three man rotations. Who, uh, you're gonna have to rely on Heavy CC. Hold that thought. Yep, as we see, they are trying to dive onto that Wonder Woman. She's able to dash away, but the Alice, not quite so. Uh, instead, is going to get picked up and opens up this opportunity for the side of Potatoes to go for that return Abyssal Dragon, picking up the second run of the game. As, oh, there, there might be a steal as uh, someone is going by. They're not going to go too deep. Uh, they're still fighting over this one. They haven't secured it just yet. And I believe Wonder Woman from the side of Serenity just stole that. 
Esper replays going on in the screen, trying to keep an eye on the action at the same time. And so I was gonna say, Potatoes, they went toe-to-toe, -to -toe. they got three to three kills, and they were just about to get even on uh, objectives. But Wonder Woman coming in with the steal, this was Potatoes not making the decision to commit to the kill or to commit to the objective. And that's the big difference we're seeing here, as you mentioned earlier, with Serenity, their thinking, their thought process so far, the way they've uh, been able to, I guess, produce these plays quite cleanly and quickly as we see them making this ro four-man rotation down to the bot lane onto Killer Guy. They pick up another kill for themselves and just putting down the pressure in this early game. All the meanwhile, Max up in the top lane already on that tier two. I, I take that back. The tower is gone. It is no more. Uh, he's going to be up to pop the flare out. Might be using the ultimate for escape. And he's going to try to do it. Again, he goes under the tower and goes for a bit of a kamikaze there, as we do see kamikaze in the mid. Uh, he is going to get stunned out, but I think he should be safe for now. Either way, Serenity dominating this early game. I feel like if he did that sooner, he would have done a... Uh, he would have survived, but I feel like he waited a little bit too long, but nice effort nonetheless. Tower actually managed to hit him, and now the Batman might be in a, a bit of trouble here. But looking at the replay, mm -hmm. let's see how Freaky, Freaky, what his name is? I thought yep. his name, yes, sir. Um, try to steal. He just oh, walks just in. Walks in. <laughs> uses the punish. Wow, impressive. Everybody was just so focused on putting the Abyssal Dragon and securing that they forgot to try and CC, try to burst Wonder Woman down, but. Yes, sir. That's going to be two Abyssal Dragons already for the side of Serenity. Just as you said, I request a duel. They are dominating at this point as top side is not the first tier turret of Serenity is not even damaged, um, not uh, not a bit even. So at this moment, we see Potatoes doing the defense mode. We'll see how they're going to adjust through this. Yeah, as I said, uh, judging by the draft of both teams, I think Potatoes have a decent draft on their hands. Um, you were a bit worried about that Mina pick in terms of at least uh, the spell they picked up for themselves. And I think that there is an opportunity for comeback, but if they're not going to be uh, trying to counterplay these, if they're just re uh, reacting to the plays after they happen, they're always a step behind. You can see right now there's no contest at all for the Dark Slayer. It's going to go into the hands of Serenity, not only pushing that gold lead uh, and experience further. You can see they're seeing 20.6k over to 16k. That's a fairly decent lead when we're eight minutes in. And you mentioned the objectives earlier that they're just so... Uh, they haven't really taken anything as a loss so far except kills. But that doesn't even matter to them because their kills have been so much more meaningful. But we can see both teams a game ready for a fight here. They're going to go all in. There's going to be Violet with the engage on the roll. And now Killer Guy in the front line. It looks like they're going to be able to take down Zipfire. And they're going to move on through. This is Potatoes actually picking up a few kills for themselves. But Max is right in the thick of it in the back line look how much damage he's doing he's been able to stack up items this whole time and just tank up and takes down that of um oh my the roll in by violet lights on that violet it's gonna roll in and finish off securing the team wipe for them and they're gonna go for the high ground tower and i'm not sure let's see death timers three seconds up until uh naga batman's up they might be up to finish the game it's a bit risky they have freaky in the base alongside with them but they're gonna go for the core anyway they're going all in they get cc'd up by that of killer guy and naga batman and there's gonna be the roma co AI, uh, ai on that joining in and they are going to be able to hold off for just that much longer, but Serenity to have the guts to try end it out that quickly uh, really shows something about how this match is going so far. Alice trying to support Freaky, make sure they get out there. They miss the uh, dash, but there is no chase up, so they should be fine. Take note, the engage at the top side jungle earlier was a 4v5. They definitely can handle. Uh, it was so funny how I see Freaky, or rather Light was the first one to try to dive in, but they weren't able to burst the Violet down. She was still super safe and and she survived and just practically finished almost everybody with Wonder Woman split pushing. Here comes the Senyal. This engage looking like it's gonna be messy. Go down that. Oh. The Mina and following will be the uh, Morin. 
and they're gonna go on through. Here comes on Max with the ultimate to join in on the fight. A bit late, but it doesn't matter. Roman's the last one left standing for the side of potatoes, and he won't be able to hold the ground against that of the Wonder Woman frontline with the triple kill. That's gonna be freaky holding it on through for Serenity, of course, with the help of their team nonetheless. Uh, Serenity as a team, as a whole, game the ace. They've just played this match so far so perfectly. You might say, well, they lost uh, a few people in the early game. I think those kind of depths didn't matter when you look at the overall uh, macro play that they have for themselves. Wow, that B step at the last part from like GGWP, they did the right calls here for Serenity and they definitely dominated that game number one but take note this is a best of three series so i'm quite curious what kind of adjustments potatoes um is going to be doing as they already too old yesterday so momentum wise morale wise they should be good it's just really tough especially with the comp that they uh they assemble it's so difficult to create these um early game opportunities to get the early game lead they for me they kind of lack the hard cc um, to actually make it work in comparison to what uh, the Serenity has has to offer. Yeah, I think that could be the case there, what we saw in the final fight, although uh, they were all grouped up and that's a perfect opportunity for CC as such. Uh, and you'd think that damage output would come through, but uh, once Prater was gone, there's really no hope. Roma was left standing on his own and that was easy cleanup for the rest of the team. They initiated without the max and the max was barely needed during that last fight. Uh, but yeah, GG, well played to those two teams, and we'll have to see how they go into the next draft. Handing it back to Alfriku and Asarai. So a pretty intense game there. I mean, for my for my perspective, I thought that I thought like Potatoes would have a stronger like showing in this game number one, but it felt like that composition from Serenity just shown off, and this was all. Um, because of how potatoes kind of poorly managed their objectives their composition was supposed to be all in was supposed to be skirmish and objective based but there was there was a lot of points there were in abyssal dragon was contested not really heavily by serenity but the timing the tempo that they did to kind of get those steals was just really well and there was a point there on the second abyssal dragon were in wonder woman walked up and just threw out her shield and got the got the steal. I mean, what in the world? <laughs> yeah. How can it happen? I just walked in, clicked that punish, tapped that punish, and then there there's the steal. Uh, normally, when you see someone do that, you just focus all your your abilities at Wonder Woman or at whoever the target is. Uh, and she didn't have backup nearby as well. And as you can see, light was already ramped enough his damage and it was so so smooth for her and it's so weird too because that engage before uh on that replay before that just uh backwards a couple of minutes or seconds it was the violet that dove into like three people that were hiding in the brush but they still weren't able to finish uh the one of the prime targets or the key players on serenity's side take note i was really worried for serenity because a Prada in in very small spaces it's so easy to land his skill shots but because of you know how far ahead serenity was already in the game it was so difficult for them to take advantage of the terrain and the fact that it was a 4v5 situation yeah execution definitely a um, little bit lackluster for potatoes here they could have done a bit better in being able to kind of modulate themselves in their team fights as well as getting those objectives on the other hand though we keep saying about you know some of the mistakes that potatoes did but serenity on the other hand played their composition quite well i, I believe you were talking about a while ago how their composition kind of revolves around a lot of ability the possibility of the catch-up and their scaling is not too shabby having that violet and the l'oreal as well so all they had to do was you know, capitalize, make sure that they had something to get get away from the mistakes of potatoes. Again, like I said, abyssal dragons at one point. And then when there was some skirmishes happening, it wasn't really a five versus five, maybe like a four V three, three V four. And then you'll be seeing from out of nowhere, L'Oreal just, you know, just dashes in for some kills or the tumble of the violet with that long range rocket of hers is getting all of these um 
execution kills and it makes it so easy for Serenity to get these pretty quick cash grabs for them and then the max I means coming from top side to bottom with that lift off and even though the Zenyal, like came in earlier than him the damage output for potatoes at that point wasn't really you know um powerful enough to kind of make even the Zenyal's uh longevity in the fight worth so when the max came in he had the damage he had the hp so all he had to do was what they did catch off and then just you know have the execution kills indeed I agree with you. <laughs> so now, game number two should be going underway. We're still waiting for the draft here, guys, but it seems like Serenity is looking pretty dang strong. Yes, the draft is ready, actually. Oh, okay. So yes, we're heading it over to our draft for game number two here for Potatoes versus Serenity. Serenity did a very, very good job with their rotations and drafting. So I'm pretty sure Potatoes will have a a little bit of adjustments at this point as L'Oreal is being seen as their first pick. Zeph is not going to be seen in this, uh, what do you call this, in in our uh, in our second game. So Max is still a priority. And if they do lock Max and Wonder Woman in, that's two really strong picks at first rotation. So I'm really wondering what Potatoes could do. Either probably get to Violet for themselves just so that they make sure that they don't get the Violet or one of the heroes that really worked well for Serenity. They either could make uh, assemble their own style or try to counter pick or steal a couple of picks from Serenity. But as you see this, I remember one of our co-casters for MYSG and PH server, he will call the Semiel and Malak combo the heaven and hell combination. So they would both drop, drop from above and just deal and just peel for their squad, deal a lot of damage as well. But if they do lock this Illumia in, of course not. Violet and Freda though, really, really strong. I really love Serenity's draft again. Yeah, I mean they're just going for that poke once again. We haven't really, we didn't really see potatoes kind of make well this Freda kick, but I mean with that Wonder Woman, with that Max, kind of not really banking on the all-out skirmish type of composition here, I don't think it's gonna be uh, it's, it's gonna be the same deal. And like he said, Potato's gonna be going for the Heaven and Earth or Heaven and Hell kind of combo. But, well, it's gonna be Heaven, Hell, and Earth because they got the Lumbar as well, you know, mixed into that fray. But what's super interesting here is that Potato's will be going for a skirmish type of composition once again for in Trinity can play around that all day, every day, every day, okay. And that might act, not actually be, um, you know, what works because game number one, we saw already that it did not. In game number two, if that's the, the way they play, they have to play it differently now to kind of make it, you know, possible for them to actually get the W. That is true. But uh, in comparison to the previous one, I preferably really like the Lumber pick rather than the Mina pick because um, Lumber's skills are definitely good for peeling and initiating and disengaging as well and also an innate skill you you can carry heal but you can you still have the mobility to dash out of danger so that's the reason why i prefer the lumber observer rather than the mina observer or roamer pick and as for the malak and Samuel, really really strong heroes as well both of them have some sort of survivability kit they have they have the uh, the ability to have what do you call this to cut through escapes of certain mm. heroes. So I think I think that's a that's a really good dynamic as well. That's going to be different for game number two, which I strongly believe potatoes can potatoes can actually make this work. But looking at Serenity's draft again, it's just so so scary. Looking at the Prada and then the Violet, they they have a really good wave clear wave clear plus really good scaling again it's the same sort of formula or mindset from the previous one except mm -hmm. that there's no dancing moriel like before wonder woman and max first rotation that was completely it's like a giveaway for them so obviously at the moment i feel like maybe potato sees um sees l'oreal as the threat rather than the max pick so maybe that's the reasoning or that's the reason behind why they picked um, the L'Oreal first. Yeah, definitely. You want to have that mobility and that scaling into the late game, which I felt like, again, Potatoes didn't have um, 
Are we actually ready to go into game number two? Not yet. I believe not yet. Not yes. yet. All right. So with that in mind, we're still going to be seeing a Zenyel here and a Morin. I'm really not sure why we have Morin, but I feel like this is just more of a comfort pick for um, the Potato Squad. On the other hand, you got to give it to Serenity for that with all of this mobility that they have and catch off, they won't go lacking in terms of utility. So aside from going for the possibility of the Alice, we're going to be seeing them with that teamy. And yeah, yes. so without further ado, I believe gaming number two is going to go underway. So I request a duel and Riku will be handling that. Yes, thanks again. We're right back in to match number two here between Potatoes and Serenity. Serenity did take game number one before, and we'll have to see how it goes this time. Shashua starting it off with a nice denial of that uh, buff that they would keep for themselves. And Zephal needs to be careful in that bush, uh, but they are teaming. They're going to be able to uh, get out there all right. And we saw uh, Teamy, I, I believe it was in the match where we had a 4v5. Uh, at some point, Teamy was just such a key uh, part to the team uh, for those engagements, and that kept them holding on for so long. So, with that, uh, we will have to see how it plays out this time because it looks like Pateos have really given the side of Serenity their key picks once again. You've got the Wonder Woman and you've got the Max, which we saw used so well in that previous matchup. But uh, how are you feeling? I have to ask a question once again about uh, this drop. There's, there's going to be Naga Batman getting jumped onto. He should be safe, so I'll let you go ahead, Riku. Yeah, 14 seconds left for the Abyssal Dragon to spawn. Almost level 4 for Violet, so they're going to be aiming for the Senial, um gank over here but i don't think they have enough cc to actually lock him down but that's four people actually rotating so i really like this teamy pick especially violet is more of a okay i'm gonna get one item two item spikes and i'm pretty sure this teamy pick is gonna help them spike even faster if you pair that up with really good and effective rotations and rotations whereas it will always reap rewards that it's gonna be so hard to shut down Normally when, uh, normally, when Violet reaches her spikes, it's so hard to shut her down. And normally, what Violet would do, she would try to counter you, uh, counter jungle you, and keep ganking nonstop. With the team, it's a good engage. Speaking about ganks, here comes the gank between Freaky and Light. They're going to be able to pick up the first blood onto the Xenio. Uh, and this is kind of what I was looking at with their rotations there. They got so much more out of it than Potatoes. They went, they got the Abyssal Dragon for themselves. They got the Mike Golem and most of the bomb jungle from the side of Potatoes. And meanwhile, you look at what uh, Potatoes got when they were trying to pressure the top lane, and it's really nothing in return. And I feel like this is the biggest problem between this matchup between Potatoes and Serenity isn't so much the draft, but just the... Uh, macro plays we're seeing coming out here from Serenity are just so much more on point and so much cleaner and they always have uh, a plan ready as you can see they're trying to pressure the Malik it doesn't really go to any fruition but as soon as they're done there they're on to the next thing definitely because oh well 40 seconds for a couple of objectives on the map, Sentinel or Abyssal Dragon. But I did mention how they might be a little bit aggressive, but look at that, they might start a fight here. Yeah, that's gonna be freaky going into the back lines, but we do see Zipfile getting knocked up in the midst of everything. Might be the first to go down here, but Max making the rotation down with that ultimate, picks up the kill onto Morin, and now it's going to be a scramble for kills as Teamy getting taken down in that front line. I mean, it's still early game, not quite tanky enough and Praetor with the snipe under the tower is able to pick up a kill for his team and just the man uh, outnumber the outnumbering them they are able to pick up a kill onto Malik who was going in all alone so Serenity only losing one member from that whole fight and I think they're, they're completely fine with that because look at the return they're getting on the way out yeah, the timing is so perfect too. The once the start, uh, once the fight started, and you know, Serenity managed to win that. It's Abyssal Dragon. Not only did they get killed, not only did they steal Morin's buffs, they also managed to get Abyssal Dragon. So that's a ton of things to take off from the map for Serenity. Just push their lead even further. And the thing is, 
Morin, knowing the fact that, okay, I'm a jungle Morin, it's sort of like I have the punish and I don't have a dash skill to escape. So normally when people or when a team is so far ahead, they would want to keep on with their lead by pressuring you in your own jungle. Knowing the fact you don't have flicker, you don't have a dash skill, you only have punish. So that's what they're going to do, especially they have Wonder Woman on their side. And team is making his rounds towards top. Yep, just trying to catch out that Malik with uh, the Pui Pui to get the stun off, which is what we talked about being such a key initiate. AoE stun is so big for his team, as well as into the late game, the amount of damage he can just soak up. But uh, while we're here in this pause, let's just take a look at where both teams are standing, because right now, ooh, looks like we can have some technical uh, screen coming up. Okay, I, I want to read out the goal, but I'm pretty sure it's something like 15.9k over to a possible 10 or 11. Either way, they're about 4 or 5k ahead as they were after they took that second Abyssal Dragon for themselves. So this is Serenity I'm talking about, of course. And if things remain this way, I think that they're going to be in very good shape uh, moving into what could be considered the mid and even end game here. As they're going to go on to Kamikaze in the top lane and the tower won't be up for much longer. So there's nowhere for Kamikaze to hide. Gets shut down instantly. Uh, and they're going to be able to pick up that kill with ease. Teamy uh, making the rotation into that jungle side, just make sure they don't get ganked here. He's going to be there with the Pui Pui's instantly. I could see it going uh, just to make sure they lock up anyone with that CC. And meanwhile, in the bot side of the map, we have a 1v1 going on here between that Morin that you talked about earlier and Wonder Woman. Max joins in the fight, and he's going to be able to turn that fight around. Uh, a bit unfair, in my opinion, but that's how it's played. And they're going to be able to pick up another kill for themselves. So, yeah, we do see here 11k to 17k. That kind of difference this early into the game is really devastating for the side of Potatoes. And I just have to ask, if, if there's anything Potatoes can do to make a comeback here, what do you think that play is? I think Potatoes has so... Well, not so many, but they have the kit to actually punish over commitments. They have the Senyal to try and outnumber. They have the L'Oreal to try to dance around tower dives. So it kind of, there, there, there was this one instance where the Malak was already at top, already sensed the teamy, or they seen the teamy rather. So they have some sort of plan to do a tower dive. So I was expecting the Senyal will drop in, try to prolong the fight a little bit better or longer. And then so that L'Oreal and Morin could catch up. But I think that was a that was the problem here. Um, they didn't do that, and that's the reason why they keep getting all these kills. They keep segregating them and then killing them one by one because again, they're stronger together, especially if you're behind. Try to punish over commitment and try to punish greedy plays. But at this point, Serenity knows what they're doing. Yeah, you can definitely see that where Max was keeping two of them busy up in the top lane. Whereas the rest of the team decides to put this pressure down on the bot side and they make that full commitment with the rest of the four members down there because they're slowly breaking apart the team of potatoes. They're slowly uh, taking down objectives in their defensives. Uh, but this could be a chance for punish, but it could also go the other way around with uh, <laughs> Wonder Woman just picking up a return kill onto that Morin and now that, that's why, man, I, I think it's something what Asurai said earlier that uh, when it kind of gets to this situation, it's not so much about the positioning and everything, even with good positioning and such things. It's so tough when you're just lacking on the damage to really turn anything around. But as I say that, <laughs> there is going to be the Violet picked up. And I'm not sure what uh, quite what happened there. Uh, I'm not actually in fact sure where she died on the map. Oh, under... Oh, did you see? Could be, I think around the jungle. There was a mini skirmish at the jungle earlier. So probably a L'Oreal pick up uh, on that kill, but Darth Vader might get jumped on. Oh, and Keo coming in. Now this is where Pateros really can make a play, where they fully outnumber that map with the dive fully commit to that and it's these little steps that they make that might bring them back into the game those little punishes for the over commitments that i believe you were talking about earlier yes definitely that was the opening probably not the opening they needed right now 
but it's something that could, if they keep doing this, it's going to pile up and pile up and they might reach to that point where they can fight at an equal, an e uh, at an equal ground. But at this point, with knowing the fact that they have a Prada still and a Violet, because so far we haven't really seen these 5v5 fights. Normally you see the 5v5 if it's a tower defense mode, which is all the turrets are gone except for the high ground towers. So at this point, we still cannot see the actual 5v5, how it's going to pan out. But look at that, Abyssal Dragon has been secured by Serenity. This is what I don't understand by potatoes. I'll hold the fort until this little skirmish goes down as we see Zenial joining in with ultimate to help uh, out with the fight. But they're all going in on the side of Serenity. They take down that of Nephew and they're going to follow up onto, I believe that's uh, Killer Guy stuck in the midst of that. And now that that's the thing. Killer Guy was there taking the Seagull, but he could have easily made the call to his team that we need this. Uh, we need to contest this Abyssal Dragon, because I believe that would be the next step of those small kills they were getting to get back into the game. But by handing that Abyssal Dragon over, you're basically handing the game over as we now see Serenity going for that Dark Slayer. So that's my issue there with the rotations and perhaps the shot falling on the side of Potatoes. True. Yeah, I, I it is a little bit questionable, especially seeing that the Abyssal Dragon has already been taken and it's going to be a three v4 situation as well and yeah, let's see 2v1 in the bot lane freaky gonna dive in but then then busy all the meanwhile dark slayer goes into the hands of serenity so that's gonna be the four man push down mid max going in full commit down under i'm not sure if that's the right call to do they're being a bit greedy and they're gonna get punished for it kamikaze the first to go down actually um but that's a bit Ooh. of a trade-off as there's gonna be violet joining in the fight and violet we haven't seen so much action of in this match but all of a sudden is popping off that's gonna be light but um light the marksman for their side and just diving in you can see the damage output do get knocked up here but they're gonna follow on through surely pushing back that lumber and as soon as they focus on Zenio, um, they're pretty much opening this court for themselves they need to be a bit cautious malik is back up in three seconds so i don't think they can end right here right now but don't quote me on it because they are going in onto the core, putting the damage down. Violet just needs to get into position and you can see that zip light going all the way in. And I believe the last hit may have been by that of Joshua uh, in there. And he gets the kill as well alongside. That's going to be game number two going over to Serenity and not as clean as before. You could see they were rarely looking to push things there, uh, but they do get the win in the end. And I would say for the for the most part, moving on from here, I would just like to see a team that challenges their macro plays and their decisions because left unchecked, this team is definitely unstoppable. Yeah, as well as their drafting, it's really, really well made. They thought through, I they thought of it so thoroughly. But going back, you can tell that the communi the comms are are there. With that said, you when Max went in. And then Timmy activated being a bro. The timing was perfect. Even though the Max died, he still was able to revive with him. So that was just perfect comms as well. Yeah, well, I'll hand it back to yourself and Asurai for a further analysis of that 2-0 match, the first of today between Serenity and Potatoes. Well, honestly, thank you so much for that one. I request a duel. Nothing much said on that game number two except for the fact that Serenity on game number one, they were, it was a little bit back and forth, but this game number two, it was basically Serenity's game. You know how um, you could call it the serendipitous game ever for them. But yeah. Wow. <laughs> they, you, you, you catch me by surprise yeah. most of the time, and I'm speechless. <laughs> but yeah, the, it was definitely their game. They know what they were doing from drafting. They're so confident in you know getting all these wonder women first max first i think it's the first time that we've seen wonder woman in aov india for our summer championships so i'm pretty impressive about their their teamwork their calls how they try to segregate opponents okay you deal with them you distract them while we take dark slayer okay i'm going in just activate being a bro if they focus 
all their cooldowns on me, it's fine. And I'll just revive anyways. And that's what happened there. You can see that <coughs> Darth Vader is still alive despite uh, diving in into five or four people. It was still okay. So you can see that Serenity is the type of team <coughs> that has a lot of trust, that have a lot of communication, they make it work, and as well as their shot calling is just really good as well. Yeah, I mean, everything. Like, I believe it was also Ayakose Duel who said that, yeah, there someone has to kind of match that macro play that Serenity brings to the table. And it shows, like, they know which objective or which lane to pressure to get the maximum effect. You know, they have max, so why not get the maximum effect as well from their composition? And what Potatoes did there that was kind of weird is that you saw Potatoes yesterday when they went up against, I believe that was Capricious, they were dominating. They felt in their comfort zone and they just kept, you know, comboing and getting that getting control of the game ever so uh, ever so slightly and but you know uh, scaling up to that the the problem here is that because they're on the back end they felt a little bit more on the how to say that's the defensive end where they just played the game of serenity they never tried to kind of match up against that if they went for an abyssal dragon uh, if serenity went for the abyssal dragon well potatoes won't so at some point, there was, what, four Abyssal Dragons for Serenity around 10 minutes in? That's basically, like, again, what Duel said, a, a nail in the coffin. You're basically giving them everything they need, and you're not getting anything for yourself. And with a composition such as Potatoes that needs that, um, those, that, that, those go that gold, it's just going to be impossible to come back. Yeah, it, it's just a matter of waiting for the punishment plays because there's so many instances where, okay, uh, we're going to go in, we're going to do, we're going to tower dive. And sometimes it, they're a little bit greedy, Seren serendipity. Serenity is a little bit greedy at times, but in the right places because for some reason they can read, oh, probably Potatoes is not going to um, respond to this. They're not going to send two members, three members for this dive. I'm pretty sure we can kill them in time before anybody else comes to the Malok rescue or whoever is going to get dove upon. So I think that's one of the things where Seren Serenity is so good at. Their, their, call their calls are so fast, confident, and they know that it's right. So if they make fast decisions and not hesitating at all, then that's the time, you know, you know, Potatoes is going to have a hard time because they because they don't know where to go. It's always Serenity that's making the uh, setting up the pace of the game. They're so proactive in making all these rotations. Either make it a counter jungle attack, or maybe a, a, an objective take from from the Sentinel to the Abyssal uh, Dragon. It, it, they got everything covered, and that's the reason.